get more perspective on this from Charles St. Arnaud, Chief Economist with Alberta Central and former economist at the Bank of Canada. Charles, thanks so much for joining us this afternoon. Good afternoon. So what did you make of uh, the focus of uh, the, the speech today uh, from Tony Gravel talking about immigration? There has been a lot of talk about it in you know, recent months and how it's been, um, what effect it's been having potentially on the housing market, also on the inflation front. And he did talk about how it has, uh, spending for, due to immigration has increased inflation, but bit, by a bit, 0.1%. That seemed fairly minimal to me. Yeah, well, the impact of immigration on inflation is really through uh, kind of the housing component of uh, of the CPI. So, and as uh, Deputy Governor Gravel was saying, is that you've had a strong influx of uh, of immigrants and boosted uh, population and boosted demand for housing, and with more competition and very little uh, housing stock available, like housing supply in Canada has been growing much uh, at a much slower pace than uh, population growth. So yeah, that competition has pushed uh, rent prices to um, to very high level and to and are increasing at a fast rate. And that's and one of the components that has been pushing housing inflation much higher in Canada. And then on the other hand, there's been so many people joining the workforce uh, after a period where there was a lot of talk about labor shortages. So on the inflation side of things when it comes to, you know, wages or maybe just the the difficulty in being able to produce goods if you don't have the people that you need it, there's the, there's a positive impact on that side. Yeah, that's all of it through uh, kind of the labor input component that's been increasing faster, reduce those some of the um, uh, kind of the vac- high vacancy rates we've seen and increase and, and reduce the labor shortage. I, I would still be concerned, not concerned, but careful to put too much there because there's been a decline that also coincides with uh, businesses being less uh likely to hire or to uh, to uh, post jobs as the economy uh, started to slow in recent months. So there's both uh, impact there. But I think what's important is it's, it takes time for the economy to adjust to all those or to a big increase in population. Yes, you have a, an increase in the pool of consumers that's pushing uh, growth higher, but there's kind of more the supply side that cannot adjust. Housing is a good example, but sometimes what we I feel that we're missing is also this um, all the public services also are not being able to uh, to follow. Healthcare being one is mm-hmm. that when you have a big increase in population, do you need also to increase those service population? That what I think sometimes explains some of the big delays we're having right now in healthcare. Uh, across Canada. Yeah, the deputy governor talked about how there's a, a need for more flexibility. Um, and he was talking about the housing side of things. But, I mean, how, co- how could that work? How could uh, you know, the housing market be more flexible in order to be able to, um, you know, grow when it's needed for to, to be able to welcome more people to the country? Yeah, well, there are some more longer term and some more structural issues in the housing market. It's getting harder and harder to uh, build new units in many cities. Toronto, Vancouver, for example, are a are, are big example. So it's harder for those cities to accommodate uh, big population increase without having those big pressure on either housing prices or on rent uh, prices. So there's a need for... Um, for the public sector, with either municipal government, uh, uh, provincial government, to help ease those strains by making the system more flexible and being more able to uh, to react to the sharp increase in population. At the same time, also we have to take a step back, also start to 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 think to having those very hard t- high target of inflation makes sense when we have such big structural um, rigidities. In, uh, in some sectors. Speaking, um, you know, of, of getting in inflation down to, to the Bank of Canada's target, that 2% level, um, the Bank of Canada yesterday in its uh, statement accompanying the decision to, to hold rates and then uh, the Deputy Governor again today reiterating that the economy looks like it's no longer in excess demand. Um, what do you make of where we're at, where the Canadian economy is at, where we're at on the inflation fight as well yeah 
Well, I think it's clear from the latest data that the economy is now operating probably with a slight excess supply. So they're starting to see all the inflationary pressure that we had over the past year to ease uh, gradually. So inflation is coming back. The big question is when, how, how big the slowdown will be as we get into next year. We know we have all those uh, mortgages that have to be renewed at higher interest rate that will put further strain, strains on the household finances and reduce consumer spending. But the big concern is what will be the, uh, the, the uh, outcome in the end? Are we going into more of a soft landing or are we going into a hard landing? And with that, when, would, when will the Bank of Canada feel comfortable to start to uh, to cut interest rates, which is a, a great question, and I, I wonder when you think that might be uh, for Canada, but also for the U.S. Because we're going to hear from the U.S. Federal Reserve next week when it makes its latest decision. I'm not sure if you'd be listening for any hints at that point, or it might be too soon <laughs> to expect any sort of language shifts around the idea of of cutting. Yeah, I think it's too early yet for central banks to start kind of hinting that they're ready to cut rates. And I think the Bank of Canada yesterday was a great example. They're still in the mindset that we're happy where rates are now, but if inflation was to be more persistent, we could consider another hike. I think the hike in Canada is very unlikely. And I think they will, for central banks, they really need to see that inflation is sustainably at or close to their target before considering uh, cutting interest rates. In the case of Canada, it'll be somewhere in the spring. For the U.S., it's a bit different. They have a much stronger economy than what we've had. But one of the big reasons there is that their household sector is not as leveraged as we are here, here in Canada. Like the uh, household debt to, to disposable income to the U.S. is about a quarter lower than what we have here in Canada. So the impact of the higher interest rate hasn't had the same big dampening in effect on uh, on consumers. So then the question is like how strong the economy in the U.S. will maintain. Yeah. Uh, that will dictate a bit more the, uh, the timing for a cut. Charles